This is the Super Tournament. Why is it so super? Because we have taken 64 of the top StarCraft players in the world, and we have put them all together in one ginormous tournament with a huge prize pool. I am Moltrap, and uh, with me is a new face here. We have alongside me today a new caster for the GSL, a friend of mine, uh, someone who I've worked with, an experienced StarCraft II caster, Wolf. Say hi to the internet. Hi internet, my name is Wolf and I'm really excited to cast a GSL. It's been a long time dream of mine to be here in Seoul, Korea, casting a GSL with someone as handsome and awesome as you, <laughs> Moltrap. So I'm really excited to get into these games, actually. That's what I've been thinking about the last 30, 45 minutes. I can't stop thinking yeah, about man, it. Yeah, man. I have been stoked about this tournament for a long time. We have some excellent matches today as well. We got a lot of, like, sleeper matches, I would we say. Do. Matches that, like, don't, like, have huge names, but I think are actually going to be really, really strong, really close matches. Yeah, Inka and Ryung, I think, is one of those matches because we've got Inka, who's a player who knocked out Nada, playing against Ryung, who's definitely an up-and-coming player, so that's something I'm really excited. I'm really watching uh, right now, so we'll see how that, that match turns out. Yeah, it's going to be good stuff. Of course, we had some excellent, excellent games yesterday that we, we were did. not really expecting. I didn't expect Creator so, and MVP to go into the third game and yeah. it'd be an awesome, epic third game. That was totally <laughs> awesome. So hopefully we're going to see some good stuff here today. I mean, Ryung and Inka, kind of a mirror situation. Inka, a finalist. Ryung, up-and-coming player, didn't quite do that well in Code A, you know, um, well, he did pretty well in Code A, but he didn't. He go did to pretty the, well. You know, well he made a name for himself, but he hasn't. He hasn't made it yet, but he did make somewhat of a name for himself. Exactly. So this is kind of a proving ground for uh, for him today. And um, anyway, we are going to have um, a lot of good matches today. Four matchups. We're going to have some ZVZ. We're going to have some PVZ. We're going to start off with some PVT. All different matchups today. No matter what matchup is your favorite, you're probably going to see some of it today in some fashion or other. And uh, this is going to be totally sweet. And again, remember, giant 64-person tournament. You have to go up through six incredible rounds against the top players in the world in order to win the 100 million won prize for first place. It's going to be hardcore. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the match results from yesterday so we remember what happened there. MVP taken Creator Prime out barely... Barely. Barely. And there was game. a crazy nuke finale yeah, man. with uh, creators Go back stacking and all his units. Those VODs. <laughs> Slayer's Ganji taking out Butterfly Effect 2 0. Uh, pretty short and sweet there. Supernova owning Czech Prime despite a little cheesiness. And MMA and Lin actually very, very closely matched, but MMA a little bit better player, a little yeah, bit better multitasking. Came out on top there. Came out on top of the end. And uh, so that was yesterday's results. Now today we're going to have uh, four new matches, of course. Inca versus Ryung. It's going to be very, very sweet. And there's our ZBZ, Violet versus the Wind. Rain, a longtime GSL name, is going to be facing another up and comer. And Keen, that is actually going to be a very good Terran versus Terran. And Juke2, kind of an old name, facing any pro, more newer name, uh, seeing if he can kind of come back and prove himself once again. So we have some good stuff for you guys today. It's going to be awesome. I'm very, very much looking forward to, especially. Uh, the first match which is coming up in mere I know, moments. It's coming up in just a moments minute. away I am from so Inca versus Young. Right on our screen. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Well, who do you think is going to take it? Who do you think is going to come out on top? I mean, both players have some really good results recently, but, you know, I think the fact of the matter is Ryung lost to Hongin. He lost yeah. to Genius, and those two players aren't the best processes. They're good processes. Yeah, that's but they're the, not the best processes out there right now. That's the thing about today's matches is they're, I mean, just the way that the seeds are set up, there's definitely a clear favorite for every match. There's a favorite for every match, I would say. Um, but I think a couple of these games are going to be pretty close. This is the one. I think Inca is still the favorite. I mean, he took out Nada. Yeah, he, he took out Nada. Nada. He's a finalist. He took out Marine King Prime last season as part of uh, his... Uh, uh, was that in the up and... Wait, what am I trying to think? In the, in the round 32, I think. Anyway, he beat Marine King Prime. Yeah, he beat Marine he King. Beat, no, he's uh, he beat Virus as well last season. So he's got strong Protoss versus Terran. He's got some strong Protoss versus Terran that his statistics don't really indicate because exactly. he had a lot of early losses exactly. to Terran early on in his career. Yeah. Um, so definitely Inca's the favorite. Ryung, his statistics are also not that good, but those also kind of belie... 
his capability, I yeah. think. I mean, he, he did take a game off of Genius and off of Hong, and I believe both those were 2-1 victories, if I remember correctly. And, you know, those play Pro's players aren't that great. Well, here comes our player. Take a look at OGS Inca. His GSL ranking is ninth. He's able to get to the CODES round of 32 in January. In March, he made it to the same round of 32. And then May, he was, of course, our finalist. And he's yeah. in CODES for July. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how he, like, didn't really do much, didn't really do much, and then all of a sudden, boom! Second place. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a story about Inca. So he's really scary right now, and there's a shot of him. There he is, warping up his booth. He is, what is he doing? Scratching the table? He's scratching the table a little bit. Just That's getting cool. his APM fingers ready. Doesn't yeah. want to touch that keyboard he's, just yet. He's, he's, his star sense is so sharp, he has to dull it down a little bit on the table first, just so he doesn't exactly. break He, he doesn't, doesn't want to break, break the, the keys. keyboard. He doesn't want to get a bunch of nerd sweat on there. Exactly. <laughs> his key's too slippery, he's moving his fingers too fast. You do not want that to happen, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, they're a little doing a little chatting in the screen. That's why he's, uh, they're talking to each other. That is one of the cool things about being down here at the studio yeah. at the GSL is the players, even if they're playing against each other, are always kind of uh, you know talking back and forth, discussing things beforehand. Now here is a little shot of Ryung. Look at that. First Protoss, two wins, four losses. Like I said, doesn't look good, but I think he's capable of a lot more. Uh, got a little bit unlucky, got caught off guard by some Void Rays by Genius in the Team League. Uh, but he did get to uh, the Code A semi-finals last season, so very strong player, able to get that far, despite not doing well in the up and down matches. And uh, yeah, like I said, his stats just look pretty bad, but I think he's still going to give us some He's good got games. a lot of potential. He's on Slayers, and that's the team of potential, I feel like, right now. And he's a really young guy, so see how he goes in this in this series. I think he's he's got a shot at it for sure. Yeah. Don't definitely. count him out yet. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy too, by the way. Have you, have you been able I actually to talk haven't to him, him yet? yet? Yeah, he is always... Uh, He's always he's like one of the more laid back pro gamers. Like he's always smiling and like saying hi and stuff like that. I saw him in the makeup room earlier. He, he waved at me. <laughs> um, anyway, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be good stuff. It you is have, gonna be you, good stuff. You have not lived yet though until MVP comes up to you and says hi. That was like highlight. I know I saw him yesterday. Highlight I was of my year of when he did that. All uh, right. Anyway. Yes, so if you are in Seoul, by the way, definitely come down and check out some matches here today. We have a lot of foreign fans in the audience today have we come do. on down to cheer people on. There's a, there's some, well, we'll get a shot of them later, probably in the audience, but uh, talk about that later. Anyway, there we go. Slayers Ryong versus OGS Inca. The map is going to be Provost. For the first map, it's going to be a large macro map. Now keep in mind, anyway, let's see what happens in the first game. OGS Inca versus Players Real. All right, here we go. Up in the top right of Crevasse, we have the second place medalist from the previous season of jo uh, GSL. He is going to be playing as the red. He is OGS Inca. It's my first intro. <laughs> So I used to do that. Um, anyway, and here we have at the upper left-hand corner of the map, an up-and-coming player from Slayers. Slayers Ryung. Slayers Ryung. And uh, this is Crevasse, and is that a... Okay, never mind. Early probe, but it's an early probe scout. I was going to say, uh, even though this is a, sort of a macro-oriented map, we did have Inca do kind of an all-in on this map, yeah. if I recall, against Nada, so it's All not necessarily going to be a macro game. A lot of the times players on this map do like to do all-ins because it's not unusual to see a Nexus first or Command Center first or just really, really risky expansion builds because you do have that backdoor expansion area and for that reason, people like to be a little bit risky so all-ins can be quite good. Yeah, it's uh, you know the meta, whole metagame thing where if they're not expecting an all-in because it's better not to, sometimes it's better to exactly. do the all-in, etc. Ryung opting not to make a wall here. He's keeping his bear back, and Inca, did he even make a gateway yet? Nope. Nexus first, just Nexus like I said. Nexus first for Inca. And uh, Ryung, I'm not sure if he's really going to be able to take advantage of this. He's only got the one barracks, and he hasn't scouted Inca yet. Exactly. So he is going to, I think he's just got a standard opening plan. It's looking like he is going to want to get a, either get a tech lab or start taking up the factory tech here relatively soon. 
And so far, I think with this type of Nexus first build on this map, especially when he's kind of lucked out in the scouting, he should be able to hold anything that Ryung wants to throw at him. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit late for Ryung to really put much pressure on with this. He is getting a tech lab out. Um, maybe planning to uh, maybe get out of Reaper, see what's going on, something like that, and exactly. expand off of it. Although he's not really saving up money just yet for that. There's a Reaper, is coming out to scout. It's always a good choice on this map. Because if your opponent gets that quick stalker out, then he's always going to be able to keep your SCB out. You always want to get that Reaper in, yeah. check for that Nexus. Now here's the thing though, he's just getting his core up. So he is, if he goes the right direction, which I think he has scouted in Kunao, yes. He probably should be able to get that Reaper in his base uh, about the same time that the Stalker comes out at the very least, if not earlier. So he might even be able to get a couple probe kills out of this, actually. Yeah, exactly. Um, because without that Stalker, the Reaper can kite everything that yeah. he can chase it with. Maybe he'll sacrifice... Is he making a... Yeah, he's got a Zealot, so maybe he'll sacrifice that to uh, soak up some hits, save his probes. Yeah. Zealot taking one for the team. We'll find out, though. Reaper is... Running across the map right now, and Inca is fine. Well, uh, let's see. Probe is not going to spot it at the front there. He's going to scope things out, check for it. Here comes that Reaper. It's going to do a little double jump up into the expansion of Inca. And there's nothing there. He runs the probe pretty quickly. Might lose one. Nope. Zealot's going to come in there, but that Reaper says, haha, I've got rocket packs, and you don't. <laughs> the two Stalkers are on the way. They're both being front of boosted out of those gateways, and so the Reaper is going to have to run away. Can't really do much else at this point. Stim is being started. It's a pretty quick stim, but it's always a safe follower-up to uh, what Ryung is doing here. He's going to go ahead and get his gases. Only yeah. has that one gas, so he can only go up to three gases on two bases, so that does somewhat limit his tech. Yeah, the expansion in the back, for those of you who don't know, it is in the back, so it's protected, but it has a little bit less resources available, so it's not as... Not as good. Um, and that Reaper is still <laughs> scouting around. There was a word I was thinking of. It's not as good. I couldn't think. Lucrative. That's the one I'm Yeah, it's for. not as good for the long term. And you can't get, uh, you know, you won't be able to have exactly. four gas. So it's not quite as good as four. But Here comes just, the Reaper in here again. It's just so easy to take. It's hard to pass up. And he's going to get a probe kill. Might get a second one. There are Stalkers on the map. They're up and run back because they were out putting pressure on. And actually, they're not running back. They are just hitting the front. It's going to wait for his reinforcement Stalkers to deal with that Reaper. And that Reaper continuing to get kills. It's up to, I can't really see how many kills. It looks like three or four, four kills. kills now. But the Stalkers chase it down. And he explodes. He does explode. Very sad death now. I hate exploding, man. <laughs> I hate it too. If you ever get blown up, you, know, you won't tell anyone about it, that's for sure. Yeah. All right now, oh, looks like we're going to have a little bit of pressure up here at the front by Inca. Now, Marines, of course, cannot deal with stalkers. Stalkers are micro correctly, but there's so many Marines that he's just overwhelming those stalkers, forcing Inca back. Yeah. He kind of just wanted to make sure he stepped back a little bit, make sure he knew he was there. Now, Stim is moments from completing, and once that does complete, those Marines will be able to own those stalkers pretty badly if they stick around. Yeah, exactly. Once he got Stim out, oh, double Stargate. Whoa! Double Stargate. Now these Marines coming out. Stim is not completed yet, but there's only those two Stalkers. I'm curious to see if he's going to actually Stim to take care of those Stalkers or just keep his health for another day. It looks like he is going to go ahead and fall back. Actually sending the uninjured Marines in to do some more battle. I like that. Now the two Starports there and goes. Stargates are really interesting because basically there are two units that you make out of Stargates. Those are Phoenixes and Void Rays, and he knows his opponent has a pretty high Marine count, so it's a very unusual choice to go for those. Could be carriers. You can make carriers yeah, out of Stargates, too. He's hitting too. them. It's almost like a StarCraft 1 type thing where you hide your Stargates, make yeah. a fleet beacon, and start making carriers, and your opponent just doesn't know about it. Let's I don't think see. we're going to see anything like that. It's yeah, going to be there's Void Rays. Void Rays. Good call. Yeah, no, I mean, he probably would have... Carriers would be definitely pretty crazy. Inca <laughs> has...